Another brick fan here with a Harry Potter set from 2019. This is the Boba Tom's carriage arrival at Hogwarts. We're going to jump into the set. This is set 75958 and was released in August 2019. It has 430 pieces, 4 minifigures, and cost about $50 when it was released. This set is from The Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth movie in the Harry Potter franchise. We're going to take a look at the minifigures in a minute, but let's take a look at the main build first. As you can see, this main build consists of a very nicely designed Bobaton carriage. This is done primarily in a light blue color with a bunch of stickers to add a lot of detail. You can see them all around here. There's this detailing here and here, sticker on the door, and then the same in the back, and the same on the other side, as you'll see in a moment. Overall, the effect is really good. I like these big wheels that they have and the nice pearl gold color. The way the horses are connected is a little strange and doesn't allow for a lot of movement in them. But let's take a look at those first. So we can disconnect them. And here you can see the two horses side by side. Now they are too close for the wings to actually work so, or not hit each other. So obviously the horses have been trained to do their wings in a pattern that wouldn't collide with each other. Although I guess in, in the real world, <laughs> if there were flying, if there were, if there were real flying horses, they'd probably have a different setup. There's a two by 14 piece that connects the two together and then some grill pieces and other stuff. These, uh, standard kind of harnesses that you see in a lot of carriage looks. Let's take a look at one of the uh, one of the horses by themselves. Overall the horse I think is pretty good representation. This is a normal white horse with the silver detailing. The back feet move together so there is a little bit of posability in the horse. The head does move up and down, so you get a little bit of posability there. And of course the wings are just on some clip pieces, so they will go move up and down as well. Overall, not, not a bad look for a winged horse. And I think uh, overall it's, it's pretty well done. It's a nice little figure. Moving on to the carriage. Again, lots of nice detailing, I like the gold accents that are used for like the step here, little gold knob, some gold trim up here, and then these accent pieces. There are the new lantern pieces all the way around. There's four of those, each with the uh, gold in the uh, pearl gold color. There's this chest on the back that contains some uh, extra teacups here. It just fits on a jumper piece in the back remain secure. These little details on the back of the carriage are not actually connected. They're just clipped on so they can drift a little bit. But as you see, the other side is very similar to the side we looked at before with a bunch of stickers for the extra detailing. Although you notice that the door kind of leads to nowhere. And that's because this carriage actually uh, transforms a little bit into a living quarters when it's not being used as a carriage. So what you do is you remove the top and you'll see that the entire bottom folds up. And then if we turn this around, you can see the interior of the carriage, which includes uh, kind of a living quarters up here with some uh, looks like beds here. There's a dresser with some drawers, some lights on either side, and then on the main floor has a small table with a teapot and, some, and a teacup here, which allows for a little bit of extra living space. And then, of course, when it's in traveling mode, it uh, allows for seating inside. So it does fit the two minifigures inside and then one 
out front driving that would be stationed on this jumper here. So that's the interior of the carriage itself. It just clips back down into place and then the roof goes back on to hold it. The front wheels do are on a uh, turntable, so they do turn until they touch the edge of the carriage, so perhaps, I don't know, 30 degrees maybe, but it allows for the carriage to turn, but not very sharply. Let's go ahead and take a look at the minifigures. As I mentioned in the beginning, this set comes with four minifigures. They are Hagrid, Madame Maxime, Fleur de la Cour, and Gabrielle de la Cour. Let's start with the De La Cour sisters. Fleur is the older and on the left-hand side of the screen. And Gabrielle is the smaller one on the right-hand side of the screen. Both are wearing their light blue Bobaton outfits with the hats. These are dual molded pieces and as you can imagine the same since these two are sisters. But they're very nicely done. The printing is pretty much identical on both torsos with the uh, different shades of blue making up the uniform. Gabrielle has the short legs, the non-bendable legs, standard short legs, and then she is carrying a letter here. Fleur has the nice dual molded legs, and they are full size legs. We already looked on the back, but as you see, they both have the long, the blonde hair in the back. And again, their torsos are the same. Take one of these hats off. You can see the printing along the back there. Both have alternate expressions. Looks like Gabrielle is uh, sleepy in this one, or asleep. And then Fleur is startled or scared about something here. So... Nice alternate faces for both figures. Let's move on to the next two. The next two are Madame Maxime and Hagrid. This is a the same style of Hagrid as we saw in Hagrid's Hut, although it's a completely different look. In fact, these look like uh, his best effort at, at some dress robes as he's wearing a tie and more formal robes, so he will fit this character will fit right into the clock tower, which is uh, where the Yule Ball was held. Madame Maxime has a very plain black hair piece here. Uh, she does have an orange wand, and then she's wearing a red dress with some lace along her collar there. Her base is made up of a 2x2x3 two by two by high slope piece, which does not have the rounded piece in the back so it is just a standard three high slope piece. Haggard of course is built out of this uh, special mold with these short legs. You can see that he's holding a couple of these little rounded pieces that indicate uh, panels to be guiding in the Bobatong carriage as it flies in. Moving around to the back you see that Madame Maxime continues her nice Printing for her dress on the back, uh, no printing on the sides, you may have noticed. And again, the lace along the top and then a, a button here in the back to hold the dress in place. Madame Maxime has a, an alternate face, which looks a little more concerned. Hagrid, of course, does not have an alternate face, but Hagrid does come with this nice beard piece, which is all in one which does cover up his face quite a bit, but you can see uh, the expression on his face here. But when the uh, beard goes back on, all you see are his eyes and his eyebrows. I do think they did a nice job of color matching the eyebrows with the uh, hair piece itself. A couple of very nice figures that, that fit with the set here. And uh, I think Hagrid will serve a dual purpose because, like I said, I think he's pretty much dressed to go to the Yule Ball here. And uh, you do get two different kinds of Hagrids if you buy this entire wave. Now that we've seen the minifigures, let's go back and I'll give you my final thoughts on the set. 
Overall, I think this set has a really nice overall look. I like all the details, although stickers are, are kind of a pain to apply sometimes, but they are used quite effectively here to get that kind of gold leaf look all the way around the carriage. I think it is very functional in the sense that it can open up and become kind of a living space. It gives the idea, you know, from the magical world of Harry Potter where the outside doesn't necessarily reflect how big the inside is, so it gives you kind of that illusion without uh, going overboard, I think. So that's a, a nice little feature. Again, I do like the use of all the pearl gold accents. I think the minifigures are really nice. I was a little disappointed in Madame Maxime. She has the, she has just a two by three tall, it's a two by two, three tall slope piece. Although it has some nice printing for her dress, it's just a slope piece. It doesn't have that rounded robe piece that has been used uh, over the last couple of years in the Harry Potter sets. So I was a little disappointed they just didn't make a taller version of that, but uh, perhaps it was easier just to use an existing slope piece instead of doing that. The price per part ratio is a little high on this set, where it comes in at uh, $50 for 430 pieces. Um, there's only four minifigures, so maybe a little bit overpriced, but it is a licensed Harry Potter set, so probably you, you could, should expect it to be a little bit more expensive than a standard Lego set. Hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this set. I'm going to get started on another video. Until then, happy building. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And you can also click on some of the other content I have up here on the screen.